Good afternoon, welcome to the market wrap for ABW for uh, January 2022, number tw uh, 28th of Jan. This is number 85, uh, Stuart Williamson here at the helm. Why are we doing this? We do this to share a bit of information with our clients and just tell you a little bit of what's going on in the marketplace. This week, we're going to be looking at city centres. Have they been turned into zombie wastelands by the pandemic, as many reporters have suggested? Um, compared to flourishing neighbourhoods in the outskirts around the country. We're going to look at the Garden newspaper research, Hampton, Hampton, Hampton's estate agents research. Okay, that's going to be our core to the business today. At the end, we're going to cover an apology to Barry Greenwood. We're going to talk about Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. I apologise for not mentioning these locations in enough detail previously. Uh, I'm going to remedy that, remedy that today. So if you have any queries or questions about what I'm talking about or what I'm not talking about, then please do drop me a note. Fears of zombie blocks left unoccupied in city centres um, when the pandemic exodus occurred have been proved to be unfounded. When COVID first hit in 2020, excuse me, for, for many developers, it was a nerve wracking time um, as gardens or the countryside seemed to be more important for lockdown house hunters rather than city centres. And it was concerning that half the city centre blocks that weren't finished, would they ever be finished as that happened in GFC in, 19, in 2007, 2008. But all this talk about the death of the city, death of the city centre has been proven wrong. Figures gathered by the Guardian newspaper suggest now there are thousands more people living in city centres. There hasn't been all this flight than when COVID first hit. Most are in flats and madly enough, most are without balconies or outdoor space, which is the big vaunted thing. Uh, in Liverpool, city centre population increased by almost 6% in 2020. So more people moving in, up to nearly 70,000, according to Liverpool local authorities. In Leeds city centre, estimates that more than 5,000 more people are living in the centre now than in 2019. Amongst them, many staff at Channel 4, which owned its new national headquarters there uh, early last year. In addition, Bank of England has moved half its people up there. The spokesman has said they reckon they had 38,000 people now living in Leeds city centre. Demand is rising in central London as well, as clients, uh, as, as renters move there. Um, according to Greater London Authority's December 2021 housing report. And data from right move shows that a rental, the rental price increases are up by 11.1% since November 2019 in London, with an annual increase in house prices in two points, but of 2.7%. Manchester, the city centre population is now just over 70,000, up 4.9% up on 2021 according to the council and they say despite COVID-19 Manchester remains the fastest growing city in England well they would say that wouldn't they and the population of the city centre is expected to be close to 100,000 by 2025 according to Gavin White one of the council's executive members for housing and employment and employment he goes on to say the pandemic has not deterred people wishing to live in the city and this is because of a combination of factors a, the number of jobs being created, including specialist sectors such as advanced manufacturing, digital and technology work, um, culture, sport, not just football, but any of those sort of sports, and a, a highest rate of graduate retention in the UK, not seen previously. Manchester is enjoying an enviable city growth, he says. Excuse me. Hamilton's estate agents found research Hampton's research found that many of these um, uh, apartments were off plan, the residents being renters rather than buyers, living in luxury blocks with gyms and paying as much as £2,000 a month, which is something as expats we do a lot of because it's easy to get into off plan stuff than it is to get this gazumped all the time on older stuff. They say off plan purchases are booming outside of London, according to Hampton's. They say 40% of new holds 
of, of new homes were sold in the capital were off plan in 2021, compared to 61% in Birmingham, 60% in Liverpool and 45% in Leeds. This rapid rate of um, development in Manchester city centre has led to fears of zombie blocks. Now, you know, people from Manchester are quite zombie-like anyway, so you might not be able to tell, but zombie blocks being empty. However, Manchester City Council states that the city states that the report only showed 1% of all apartments were, were void for more than six months. In addition, a growing number of family homes have been constructed in Manchester, prompting the council to build its first city centre primary school since the 1960s. I apologise for my slight on Manchester there. Um, the 210 place school in Deansgate and the 26 place nursery will be in Crowns, Crown Street, which if you know Deansgate is right in the centre of town, fantastic location, and is opening in 2023. So all this talk about city centres being empty, it's all bunkum really. Leeds is also planning major city expansion over the next decade and a council spokesman for them, a spokesperson, do apologise for them, said up to, up to 2033, the local plan has capacity for further 18,000 homes in the city centre and its fringe across 110 sites, which is consistent with the council's strategy to maximise the capacity of sustainable locations and the reuse of brownfield sites for residential use. Over half these homes already have detailed planning, cons planning consent or are under construction. And based on these current occupancy assumptions, they expect to be 27,000 additional city centre residents in place. So that's a bit about England. Let's talk about Scotland now very briefly. Not too briefly, it's not giving credit because it's a very important place. Rental growth across Scotland has been very uh, strong. Dundee, the standout performer. It's been driven very similarly to the rest of the UK by the search for space and high quality properties. And high quality properties is a bit of a different, different uh, differential in that that isn't really what people are looking for in, the, in, the, in England, for example. However, but constrained supply is an issue here, as is evident of the 4.7% annual increase in average rent asking prices during quarter three, 2022. The rental market, however, since the first quarter has turned a corner and a lot of the excess one and two bed flats that were hanging around before, because people looking for larger properties, have gone. So it, it's back below its five year average. There's also a lack of larger properties as the demand for space and family homes near top performing schools remain strong and that's the same anywhere get a good school get something that is outstanding you know you can have more parents moving there as you can expect as a result in Edinburgh overall rents for three and four bedroom properties went up annually by 5.6 percent and 3.6 percent compared to an overall rise of 1.6 1, 1. percent in Glasgow the lack of choice has been more acute with especially returning students and short-term rental opportunities being, being difficult after COP26. Prices are up by 10.3% to £928 per month. Aberdeen, which has often been a very poor location, has had two very successful quarters, but in houses, not in flats in the city centre. Dundee's rental market continues to outperform with rents increasing annually by 11.7%, again boosted by students. And again, students often get a bad rap for being good, bad tenants. But in Scotland, the parents and the students sign on the dotted line, a lot more security. West Lothian, Lanarkshire, Renfrewshire, all those commuter locations, it's up, rents are up by between 7 and 10% over the last year. Stock is low in those areas. So there is a real pressure on supply. All the data I've just mentioned is from City Lets. Looking ahead, Savills anticipates strong demand for larger properties continue in the sub city and suburban areas. And they see the, the, key, the return of key tenant groups, such as students, professionals, corporate relocations, to increase pressure on rents and have them continue to go up. There's not, not enough being built 
there's not enough supply in Scotland. That's the, one of the biggest things. Now, Northern Ireland was a completely different cup of tea, so to speak, in that it's been driven by a different set of factors. House price growth in Northern Ireland was 10.2% last year. The average is 4 to 5%, according to Simon Bryan of the self-named self estate agents. Uh, and he believes going into spring, he expects the market to continue where it left on in 2021 because there's a massive undersupply in the private resale market and the new homes market. Now, what's the rationale here? It's a really, really interesting concept in that the rationale is that you've got people returning back home, so people from Northern Ireland coming back home from, say, England, where they earned a lot more money and so have a lot more to spend. Northern Ireland is the most affordable location still in the UK. Average house price is just 150,000. So this factor, they've nicknamed the Northern Ireland factor. So it's people moving home. It's in people also who are UK, uh, England based, moving from England across to Northern Ireland so that they can work remotely from there. And then they fly back to England for meetings. So it's, it's the remote working concept at its best. And so they get English wages, which is a lot higher than the average, and I'm sorry I should have that figure. Um, but they're getting Northern Ireland prices. And that's a, an interesting concept, and that has got a fair amount of space to grow and run before you're going to see the end to it. And, and the point is, when I was researching Northern Ireland, it's amazing. They've got amazing golf courses. They've got... I think they're called largs or locks to go sailing in and boating in. They've got mountains just up the road you can go climbing in. And they've got beaches. So really, Northern Ireland has got a lot of very positive things, very close, at, at the cheapest price of um, the UK as a unit. So going into 2022, they expect the market to continue rising in Northern Ireland because of those factors. I mean, they had a pretty rough time around a financial crisis, Northern Ireland did. Massive, massive negative equity. So house prices are still coming back in some places from there. But that is the same in the UK. I mean, Leeds, you know, we're selling properties in Leeds city centre that are only 10,000 more than they were 10 years ago. Okay, on to Wales. Wales house prices are up 15.5% for the period I think it's October 2020 to 2021, compared to the UK figure of 10.2% on average. So it's the highest growth location in the UK. Highest house price increase, highest growth location. Okay, Scotland was 11.3, Northern Ireland, as I just said, uh, about 10.2, and England was 9.8. Average house in Wales is now 2,000, no, sorry, 2,000, 203,000 pounds. Okay, so it's still cheap compared to England. Just a, a point there, Wales is actually a principality, not a country. So when people say the country, it's actually incorrect. And I can say this, my wife is Welsh, and I, my children are Welsh. Mike Scott, Chief Analyst at State Agency Yopa, estimates that in, increase in prices will slow down, but not as far as right move. Right move is saying 5% for 2022. Yopa are saying that they expect to see 7% because demand for housing is still very high and is still a limited supply. And that's not going to go away, is it? You know, he says 7 to 8% 2022. You know, they're not going to start building houses all of a sudden. It's, it's just not going to occur. So you're just going to get a slowing down of that. Wales will continue to be one of the top spots. According to Stratton Parker, they say 7% growth. I think Yopa is between 7 and 8 uh, right move is 5%. But one of the biggest drivers, according to Strutton Parker, is what you're seeing in Northern Ireland, is broadband services becoming so much more faster and reliable in Wales. And you can work in as Betty Cumden, and you can be at work in Lincoln or Leeds or Manchester, London, wherever. And that will continue to keep on driving Wales as a, as a hotspot. You know, that's echoed by Purple Bricks. They talk about new buyers fresh to the market, you know, very much like the, the Northern Ireland stuff. So what you have really is strong growth in Scotland from a rental perspective, 
but also demand is high in Scotland. Even Aberdeen, which is often done very poorly, is still doing well. Uh, across Wales, again, I think you are going to see in Wales and Northern Ireland it catching up to London, which is what we're seeing in a lot of parts of, of uh, England as well. But there's good value to be had. The most surprising thing is about the zombies in Manchester is it appears there hasn't been this massive move. And there's a lot of arguments about, you know, people <clears throat> from London have been the biggest movers and they're the ones that are settling outside York or outside um, you know, Manchester or these sort of things. And there is a lot of money going that way for sure. And there's a lot of money buying properties that are not worth what they're paying for. So it's important if you're going to be buying, find a good location, make sure the voids are low in that location, make sure that you can get a good mortgage on it. Be sure that it's fitting into your big, big picture. Thank you very much for listening. Do subscribe if you can, share if you wish, and press the um, like button. Thank you very much. Cheerio. Bye-bye.